when we were doing the two groups, what would happen, right, if we had something where we pick two groups of three, and let's say we pick two groups of three from something like ten people, okay? And I wanted to know how many different groups could you form if we didn't label the groups, so the groups are defined by who's in them, and what if you were allowed replacement? I don't mean replacement within the group. It's not like you can have Alan, Alan, Alan all the way through. But I mean, this people here could be the same people over here. So Alan, Bob, I don't know, Chelsea? Alan, Bob, Chelsea. Something like that. Okay. It looks easy, but it's, it's a little bit of a trickier problem from what we did in, in the review. Okay, So let's try this out. Um, before I do this harder version, let me start with a much more simple version so you can see the idea and see if the pattern stays the same. Okay. So first, let's imagine we just have three people. A, it's like a smaller example C. In fact, let me make it even easier. Let's just put it to two groups of two. Okay. Now I'm going to run this again, assuming there is replacement. I don't mean inside the group, so it's not like AA, but I mean you can have AB and AB. Okay? Let's see how many different configurations we can come up with. So one thing is, I'll try this first approach. I'll say, well, we did this before. There are three people here. You will have to choose two of them. It doesn't matter what order you pick them in to be in this group. That's totally fine. Then you come over here and say, well, I want to do the same thing. So that seems fine too. And then you say, well, we'll multiply. Because you're not done until you pick this group and that group, right? You already seen the problem we saw during the review, which is you can overcount. So what we did before was saying, how many ways can you rearrange and mix this up? Where you can have the groups like this or like this. So A, B, C, uh, I don't know, A, B, A, C, right? Versus A, B, A, C. Well, did I flip that? My bad. So you can have A, B, A, C versus A, B, A, C. And those would be the same. So my first guess would be maybe I divide by two. And if you remember from the review, it was two factorial, right? Because so you can move around two factorial ways. It happens to be two here. Okay. But it is a little trickier than this. I'm going to show you why. Let's actually write this out. Okay, just so you believe it. So three choose two ways, right? So that means I'm going to choose two out of this group of three. Let's do that. A, B. Okay? Now let's look at all the possibilities that can happen with AB. By the way, um, just to make this concrete, 3 choose 2 is the number 3. 3 choose 2 is the number 3. So I'm figuring with this multiplication, I would get 9 people with overcounting. Okay? So let's see what happens. So I can do AB, AB, AB. I'm also going to do, so there's my AB from 1 over 3. Then I'm going to do something like this. So it's really important for me to make this point. So let's say on this side we'll start with BC, BC, BC. So really this is my second group. Remember three possible, you get nine. Just like we predicted, right? We predicted over here something to look like, sorry. Let me push all this up. We predicted on this side, three choose two, three choose two. Not on that problem with 10 people. I'm just working on the problem we currently are working on. So we predicted three times three, nine. Okay, it looks like we're going to get our 9, but remember, we're going to overcount. Okay, so now let's pick the other group. The other group here, well, AB can hook up with AB, AB can hook up with BC, or AC. That's totally fine, C, AC. And you were right. All the possible ways you can do this was 9, but I have overcounted, right? Okay, when we did it originally in the review, every time you did it, because there's no replacement, you would overcount twice, right? Here, look at what happens. So let's pick, for example, this guy, AB and BC. Do you see his counterpart? So first I pick AB, then I pick BC. That is equivalent to first I pick BC, then I pick AB. So this setup is the same as this. But look at my actions. First AB, then BC. First BC, then AB. So I've overcounted. So kill him. So far, dividing by two looks like a good idea. Keep going though. A, B, A, C. First A, B, then A, C. So we would expect first A, C, then A, B. So first A, C, then A, B. Good. Double counted here. So this guy was good for the double counting. This guy was good for the double counting. How about over here? Dividing by two would kill that. And this is another group that I double counted. Perfect so far. Okay. Look at what we have left, though. So the problem is, is that if I divided by 2, I would be assuming I would first choose AB, then second I would choose AB. Or I would do the flip, which is first choose AB, then second choose AB. But those are the same thing. 
So this guy does not occur two times in my setup. You can see that, right? He only occurs one time. Just like this guy, see the BCBC BC thing? He also occurs only one time. And how about this guy, AC, AC? He also occurs only one time. So it is harder to make this systematic, but let's see if we can make this work. I think our initial idea was pretty good. It was pretty good to look at 3 choose 2 and 3 choose 2. And obviously we're going to multiply this stuff together, right, to look at all the possibilities. That's where we get our 9, okay? The problem here is that if I want to divide by 2, the 2 factorial, that 2 was a really good idea. And it would fix us on these guys that have crossed out. But it wouldn't fix us here because it would fracture these guys in half. And it's not true. I don't have two of these. I have one of these. And you can't get 0.5 of the setup, right? So I'm going to artificially make the numbers work out. Does everybody agree? For the guys that don't repeat, where it's not BC, BC, AC, AC, AB, AB, our rule works. Take everything, divide it by two. But for these guys, they're kind of freaks. They stand out. So you can't divide by two. But I don't want to mess with this divide by two. I'll artificially make them better. So what I mean by that is, let's double him up. Let's actually put in another AC and AC. If I did that, then when I divided by two, I would get rid of one of these and get the accurate count, right? I would have to artificially, so I artificially added this guy. Okay? I'm also going to artificially add another BC. If that were the case, just humor me for a second, then when you divide it by two, it would kill this and give you the right count, right? Same thing over here. If I artificially added another AB, AB group, Right? When I divide by 2, it would kill this and give me the right count. Then you're like saying, okay, that's retarded, you're just doing whatever you want. It's okay, we can be systematic. How many of these were there? 1, 2, 3. So if I take the original number, which was 9, that didn't include adding in these extra guys, and I added in that extra 3, right? So now I'm doubled up on everything, and then I divide it by 2, this would be the correct answer. Let's check it. So 3 choose 2 is 3. 3 choose 2 is 3, plus this 3 that we're talking about here, divided by 2. So it's 9 plus 3, 12. Sorry, I don't have enough room. 12 over 2 is 6. 6 is the correct answer. Okay, And we do get 6 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? But then you're saying, okay, that's retarded. How can I generalize that to a harder problem? Let's go back to the original problem. So the original problem was we had 10 people. I would like to choose, let's say, two groups of three of them. Since there's repetition among these groups, not within them, but between them, right? I'm going to have 10 people choose three of them. And I get the full, full group back, so I can have 10 people choose three of them, right? Our first attempt is going to be what? Multiply all these choices together. But we've overcounted, right? Okay. So then you're going to see this. How many ways can I overcount? They could be like this or like this. So I'd like to divide by two. Two or two factorial, same thing. But now the problem is, remember, it's always about overcounting, right? What a pain. But remember, groups that look like this, for example, A, B, I don't know, Z, and A, B, Z, these are a problem. Because you are not double counting on this. If you pick this first and that second, or this first and that second, I mean this second, it's the same thing. So we need to double up like we did before. How do you do that? You just add in the number that we are doubling up. But then you're like, okay, well how many do you double up? Easy. First, pick any group. How many groups out there? How many three-letter groups are out there, or three-person groups? Or three people groups, how many? There are ten people out there, you choose three of them, that's exactly how many groups you have, right? And then for every group, say like A, B, C, or A, C, I don't know, H, whatever. So for every one of these groups, can't you double up this way? Isn't it possible I can end up with A, B, C here and A, B, C? Do you guys agree? So how many groups, setups do you have where basically it's the same guy in the first and last position? It's exactly the number of groups of three that you have. Because for any group of three, I can replicate it. We can carbon copy, and that would fill up my six. Do you guys agree? So our general pattern is, do the counting you think works. Tack on the number of groups you have to make it extra. So you double, you're doubled up on everything, even the ones where they repeat themselves. Then do the adjustment and divide by two.